time for a look at my February books that I read this month. Um, I actually read 10 books, only three of them I have physically, so I'm not helping myself clear my shelves by any sense. Um, but I read 10 books, so let me share what they were and what I thought of them. Um, okay, so the first book I read this month was actually like a little novella, a little ebook um, that was called With Any Luck by Ashley Poston. Poston, whatever it might be, Poston probably. Um, and it was just a cute little, they made this little series of neat, cute novellas come out on ebook. Um, this one was sort of like a, um, how do you describe it? Like a, not a maid of honor, a, like a man of honor and a best woman. Um, and it's the night before the wedding and, or the morning of the wedding and they've lost the groom and this girl has like a, I don't know, a kissing curse on her family of some sense. Anyways, it was fine. It wasn't my favorite. Ashley Poston, usually she writes, I like her adult romance, but this one, I just, you know, you could have sussed out the story a little bit. It was only like 42 pages. So even for like a little novella, it could have been a little bit longer, but it was cute. Okay, and then I read Ruthless Vows, which is the second book to, as the follow-up to Divine Rivals, and this is sort of in a fantasy world, um, but not really a fantasy world, like kind of feels like ours, but the only thing that's different is that there's like warring gods and people are sort of going off into war, and um, our two characters meet somewhat through these enchanted typewriters that they have and just how they're like you know, story forms and these writing notes and how they kind of go off to war and what that um, looks like for them. Um, this was the follow-up though. And what I liked about this one is that it definitely had some more backstory. What was really missing in the first book for me was like a little bit of that, like, why are these gods warring? What is going on? And this story definitely provided that plus, um, yeah, created so much tension. You just like needed to know what happened after where story one left off. And um, I really liked this duology. Rebecca Ross just has a beautiful way of writing and making us love the characters and her settings are really, you know, great. Everything about this was really good. So 4.5 stars for me. Okay, and then up next is Maude Horton's Glorious Revenge. Um, and this was an arc, so thank you so much to the publisher to do that. I've actually passed it on so somebody else can have a chance to read it too. And it's um, a historical fiction, but also a bit of a murder mystery. So our main character is trying to find out um, what happened to her sister, who actually um, went out to sea disguised as a boy. Um, and so she's just sort of tracking down the footsteps and following this person who she suspects of murdering her sister. Um, but I liked it. I thought it started out like a tad slow. It was like a little bit hard to get into, but it was a little like macabre and weird. And I kind of, I kind of liked that. So yeah, four stars. Okay. And then I read The Exception to the Rule by Christina Lauren. And so this, this is the same thing in the little, um, neat, cute, uh, novella series. And I love Christina Lauren. So I want to try this one up. This one sort of starts as our character sending, um, like a misplaced email, on Valentine's Day and then they happen to just start emailing each other back and forth for years and years on that day just as like a little um, catch up and then obviously eventually how they like come together which I thought was really sweet um, yeah at the beginning you know some of the emails back and forth it, it did take a little bit for like things to pick up but you kind of knew where I was going obviously and I enjoyed it okay and then I read confessions in B flat by Donna Hill, which is like a historical fiction romance, if you will, um, kind of set in in the 60s. It was set in the 60s. Um, this this was okay. What I liked about this, of course, is it sort of pinned our two main characters with with different viewpoints. So one was obviously a strong believer in Martin Luther King and his philosophy, and the other was a strong believer in Malcolm X. And obviously they had, you know, very um, differing opinions. We did read this for Black History Month, and so I did think that that, at, for our book club, and I did think that that like added some context in it. However, I did want a little bit more context. I think they sort of stuck pretty surface level with what those two philosophies were and what that looked like. And I felt to like add tension to that romance, you definitely could have like, dived in a little bit more um, because otherwise I thought this was kind of flat. It was just like 
oh, we have different views. Here I am at the bar. The last like 25%, 30% like did it for me and kind of redeemed the story. If it wasn't for book club, I might have stopped reading it just because I didn't it didn't really compel me in any way, but I did I did like the ending of the story and I did give it three stars for that. I swear at some point in time I'll be able to like hold up a book in this video, but <laughs> um, okay, and then I read XOXO by Axio and I loved this. Okay, this was really cute. Um, I'm, I was a fan of one of Axio's other books. I'm now trying to read um, all of her books just because I do think her writing is really cute. But this sort of has our girl um, chance encounter like a big K-pop star, maybe unbeknownst to her. And um, in, in sort of change of circumstances, she ends up, you know, going to South Korea to see her family and goes to this kind of prestigious art school, if you will. And then lo and behold, here is you know, this guy that she chance ran into in LA in her hometown and they're now at the same school. And so it's, yeah, just kind of their, their story and the little like friendship she meets along the way. And, um, yeah, I thought this one was really fun. If you like K-pop, uh, if you like that kind of like, you know, um, school setting, if you will, um, yeah, all of it. I enjoyed it. Okay. And then I read how to be eaten by Maria, Edelman, um, this was like sold to me as a fairy tale retelling in sort of like a support group, if you will. So I think we have five or six main characters, five, I think, and they all kind of meet up together in this basement um, to kind of share their stories, if you will. So we do, um, I'm trying to think of the ones that like stood out. We definitely had like somebody from the Hansel and Gretel story that made it, but then also somebody from like The Bachelor and uh oh definitely like yeah little red riding hood because she's definitely wearing like a wolf's coat in there and it, it was a little bit um darker than i was expecting which was fine but i don't know i don't know if the twist that i enjoyed it that much it was a little bit it was a little bit weird and i like weird i mean i was like this this was good but yeah just kind of different than what i was expecting but i do sort of like that support group setting of everybody coming together and i haven't like seen it yet in a book that i really really love and i was hoping that it was this and it, and it wasn't but it was still all right um and then i read the heiress by rachel hawkins um so this is rachel hawkins has been writing a couple of those like you know suspense thrillers if you will um she did the villa last year which i really liked she did reckless girls before that which i didn't love but anyways this one was sort of about like this couple um going back to their his family estate if you will um so it's sort of set in the present also some also some past letters you know from his mother um and some so some back and forth obviously lots of family dramas there was definitely some layers some twists which i enjoyed this was like a super quick read sometimes you just need that like easy little suspense to um yeah yeah easy little suspense to yeah just finish a book i don't know how else to say it was it was good it had me hooked like i read it fast i thought i enjoyed it four stars it was good okay and then i read a girl called echo the omnibus by uh katharina vermet she is also the author of the break the strangers the circle if you will she is a fantastic author um i had read the original girl called echo and then this one also includes um the other three subsequent ones so there was the pemmican wars um the red river resistance the northwest resistance and then the road allowance era and this sort of sees our main character echo in a classroom setting learning about metis history you know her people that she didn't know very much about but also sort of putting herself back if you will almost time traveling to those moments being there in the present so that's how we're learning about this metis history as well too for me this was informative in always such an approachable way i love graphic novels um for some of that because this was a lot of history again myself that i didn't know i um you know i feel like we never learned this stuff in school when I was growing up and despite kind of going on my own path of learning if you will um, about our indigenous history in Canada um, you know some of these things aren't always in there as well too so it was informative for me um, you know the art is fantastic um, it wasn't overwhelming in terms of the amount of information but then did give you some big timelines at the end of like 
what had happened and yeah like highly recommend um i always think that these are an approachable way to finding out more more history like that and kind of sharing it with more people so like huge for teenagers for adults for whomever this is um you know such a good format for this and yeah okay and then i have been slowly getting into studio ghibli um movies and then when i found out that howl's moving castle was a book um, written by Diana Wynne Jones in 1986, the same year that I was born. Um, I knew I wanted to read this before I then watched the movie, just so I got a sense of what the book was like. Um, I found the book a little bit darker than the movie. Typically, it kind of goes the other way, which isn't a bad thing. Um, I was able to watch the movie um, with my little guy, which was great. He also loved it. Um, you know, I love what I loved about this was the characters. Okay, it was like this very whimsical setting and I loved that it just kind of whisked you away and we had really like unique characters and I kind of loved that um I loved how things played out for them I, I found the last half to be like a little bit confusing if you will there was a lot of characters like side characters to follow that kind of came in and the story was a little bit all over the place but it was cute it was whimsical it was fun I've already picked up you know the next two in these series if you will although I don't think it follows the same character I think she's got three kind of unique fantasy things and um i love this this felt like a childhood classic even though i haven't you know read it until this year so it was it was really cute